Good evening, everyone. Are you ready for a bedtime story? Hallelujah. We've been talking recently about the artesian spring that God has put on the inside of you, springing up under its own power, a well of life, a well of his spirit, the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. You know, I desire to see you have Holy Ghost encounters, encounters with the Holy Spirit, for he is the one who quickens your mortal body. Hallelujah. I happened to be listening to a video the other day, and a song came up, and it was a Welsh song originally, and the girl that was singing it was singing in Welsh, the word I know to use, and then there was a group that was singing it in English. And I had just woke up in the morning and it was playing on my phone. And the words and the tune were like something from heaven that just went right into my spirit. That's been several days ago and I haven't been able to get away from it. And some of the words in the song tie right into the abundant, overwhelming flood of God's Spirit that He is pouring out toward you, for you, into you. Hallelujah. So I went and I looked up the history of this little song and I found out that it was the major song that was sung during the Great Revival in Wales in 1904. They had an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I just recently did a short message on, what was that now? Having faith in your measure of faith. Resting and letting the flow go. The flow of life. Jesus said, I will put within you a well of water springing up with everlasting life. God has given you his very own life. Aeonios Zoe. The life that lives itself. Self-sustaining life. And when you are having a Holy Spirit encounter. That life is pouring into you in floods. From the Spirit. And pouring out of your spirit. And through you, through your mind and your emotions, your will, your body. Hallelujah. So I just wanted to share with you just a little bit in our bedtime story tonight about this wonderful revival that took place in Wales and the young man that had such an encounter with God that he became the catalyst of it. Again, having an encounter with God, the living waters. I want to see you catch the spirit that revives. Revival, the spirit that revives. 
we've all been locked down. Maybe you still are because of the COVID virus situation. But you can have revival. You can be revived right where you are because the Holy Spirit is the spirit of revival. Evan Roberts, I've just got a nice little article here. I'll post it on the page a little later. Evan Roberts and the Welsh Revival. It is tragic that the life and legacy of Evan Roberts has nearly disappeared from the memory of the contemporary church. All who yearn for spiritual awakening cannot afford to be ignorant of this amazing man and the revival in which he figured so prominently. He was the central figure in the Welsh revival, one of the purest classical Holy Spirit outpourings in the history of the church the purest classical Holy Spirit outpouring. Father, I thank you right now that as we call to remembrance your wonderful works among the children of men, Father, I thank you that you stir the hearts that hear this bedtime story that you stir them and pour into them by your spirit, flooding them, filling them, quickening them, restoring them, healing them. Wonderful, wonderful Holy Spirit, breathe upon us, flow like a river. And Father, I do thank you for it. In Jesus' mighty and wonderful name. Hallelujah. Well, Roberts had very little education formally. He grew up in a coal mining community. And he quit school to become a coal miner at the age of 12. And at 13, he received Christ as his Savior. From the beginning of his conversion, he was extraordinarily sensitive to spiritual things. He was in a service and the person conducting the service said, what if the spirit comes and you are not here? Now this was the early 1900s when this was all taking place or the late 1800s I should say then 1904 was the actual revival so this was some time prior to that this affected what if the spirit should come in one of our services and you were not here this affected young Roberts deeply and he determined he would not miss any of the services. So he found himself in church and services after he quit leave the coal mine and his work, he'd go to services in the evening, six days a week. He so loved reading and studying about revivals. He said, I could sit up all night and read and talk about revivals. He became obsessed with the subject of seeing souls won to Christ. Hallelujah. At the age of 25, so he was converted at 13, began to seek the Lord earnestly, pray for revival in the nation of Wales, and at the age of 25, he woke up one night and found himself in the presence of God. His fellowship with God was so real that he said, I found myself with unspeakable joy 
and awe in the presence of the Almighty God. I was privileged to speak face to face with him as a man speaks face to face with a friend. This deep communion went on for four hours and then he fell asleep. This continued every night for the next three months as God revealed himself in dramatic fashion to this poor Welsh young man, preparing him for what lay ahead. Well, he knew he was called to the ministry, so he went off, as we often think of doing, to get trained in a theological school. But as he sat in a service, like a chapel service, he had a vision of himself back home in his own community, preaching to the young people that were in his church. As he was sitting in the service, one of these services where this happened, he said, although, it says, although he had already known some deep spiritual experiences because of his night visions, God had something more for him. And at the end of one of those services, the minister, Seth Joshua, prayed, O oh God, bend us, conform us to your will. Bend us, conform us to your will. And the Lord's will is healing. Lay hands on your body and say, Father, thank you that my body bends to your will. That any resistance to your healing power flowing through my body is removed as your spirit flows through me. Hallelujah. Oh God, bend us. For some reason, these words shook Evan Roberts to the core. Here are his words about what happened at that point. He said, I felt a living power invading my bosom. It took my breath away and my legs trembled exceedingly. This living power became stronger and stronger as each person in the congregation prayed until I felt it would tear my heart apart. I fell on my knees with my arms over the seat in front of me. My face was bathed in perspiration and the tears flowed in streams and I cried out, bend me, bend me. Oh, he said it was God's commending love which bent me. What a wave of peace flooded my bosom. God's commending love. God commended his love toward us so that while we were yet sinners, he sent his son to die for us. The commending love of God. Hallelujah. He has that toward you, toward your, you for your healing just like he had it toward you for the forgiveness of your sins. This mighty baptism in the Holy Spirit transformed him. He had a joy where before he had been serious and gloomy. He spoke with authority and boldness and even his health improved. He returned to his home church, then he left the theological school after two months and went back to his home church and asked the pastor if he could speak to the young people. And so after the regular prayer meeting at the church, then the pastor said, well, Roberts has some things to share if you'd like to stay. Sixteen people and one little girl stayed to see what he had to say. He wasted no time in getting to the heart of his message. He spoke about a fullness of the Holy Spirit that was available for Christians. Hallelujah, a fullness of the Holy Spirit. As you deal with sickness, you can get so dry. 
you're like dry bones. You feel like your bones, spiritual bones, are cracking inside. It just feels so dry. Hallelujah. Oh, a fresh flood of the Holy Spirit for you in this bedtime story. Hallelujah. His teaching was accompanied with a deep sense of Holy Spirit conviction. <clears throat> the next night, after the first night when the 16 people were there, then more people came because the first night all the people stood up and accepted Christ as their Savior and word began to go out of what had happened. The next night people more came and more people got saved. With each passing night more and more people came and by the second week the church was packed out and the revival was on. Fervent prayer for awakening sprang up all over the country of Wales. Within weeks, the fires of revival were burning all through the nation. You know, another reason I want to share this with you because I want to lift you up out of the circumstances that you deal with when you're dealing with issues in your body. To lift your inward man up, heavenward, for a breath of fresh air, for a refreshing, to receive a fresh infilling. Hallelujah. Talking about things of the Spirit. Pulling you up higher with me. I talked about tasting the powers of the world to come. Well, when you interact with the Holy Spirit, you are tasting the powers of the world to come. Hallelujah. Oh, how we need that. We need to drink those living waters that have been provided by the Father. Therefore, with joy, shall you draw water out of the wells of salvation. It's time for a drink, a deep, long, cool drink. Hallelujah. Here's my cup, Lord, the old song says. I lift it up, Lord. Come and quench this thirsting in my soul. Bread of heaven, feed me till I want no more. Here's my cup. I fill it up and make me whole. Hallelujah. Oh, you can drink as much as you like. Praise God. Within a couple of months, Wales was a changed nation. Crime was reduced so that the magistrates had no uh, criminals, criminal cases to try. There was a wave of bankruptcies as taverns closed. The, the police station, a reporter asked the police, what do you do with yourselves now that you don't have any crime to deal with? The police told him, We used to serve two purposes, dealing with crime and controlling crowds. Now that the revival has come, there is no crime. So we go where the crowds are, to the churches. We have several good singing voices among our policemen. So we have formed three quartets and we sing at the meetings whenever we get a chance. <laughs> this uh, valley, this police court had been have averaging 700 cases per week, six months before the revival. 700 cases per week, six months before the revival. After the revival was going full force, the average was two. Hallelujah. Evan Roberts' ministry style was unlike anything the Welsh people had ever experienced. His experience with the Holy Spirit had left him deeply emotional. Tears flowed freely at times. 
and joyous, unrestrained laughter at others. He didn't really preach as the Welsh thought of preaching. He used no notes and hardly ever prepared a sermon. He simply shared and exhorted from his heart, urging the people to press into Christ for a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. Press into Christ for a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Huh. You know, I guess right now I'm thinking of Jesus. How him and the disciples traveled around and then it came to the place where at different times he would take them apart to rest a while. I guess that's what's in my mind by sharing this little story with you. We've been talking about healing. We've been pressing toward the mark where that is concerned. It's time to come aside for a little bit and rest a while. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Robert simply shared and exhorted from his heart, urging the people to press into Christ for a fresh baptism in the Holy Spirit. Spontaneous prayer would often break out in the meetings with all the people praying to God at once. Hallelujah. Roberts was spiritually sensitive, sometimes receiving words of knowledge, information from the spirit about a particular individual and their specific needs. Sometimes the spirit would show him specific instances instances of sins that needed to be repented of. At other times he would prophesy accurately of the number of people that would submit to Christ in a particular night. One newspaper columnist wrote an article on the young man using the headline Thought Reader. So we see the gifts of the Spirit were operating in his life. In one year's time by conservative estimates, 150,000 souls were born again. The revival went on to sweep Europe, Canada, America, and many other parts of the world. Hallelujah. 150,000 souls before his encounters with God during the night, he had spent years in prayer for revival over the, and an awakening over the condition of the Christian churches in Wales. They were all dying and it concerned him. He, he, he had a burden for souls and he spent many, many hours for many years in intercession about the situation. And one day he was walking along with a friend and he said to that friend, just right out of the quote blue, do you think we can win 100,000 souls in Wales for the Lord? For a young man in 1903, 1902, to see the vision of winning a hundred thousand souls. Hallelujah. We've been talking about our imagination, making our mind think on what our spirit sees. His spirit saw a hundred thousand souls. His mind thought about it. His mouth spoke it. He prayed over it. Hallelujah. And look what happened. More than 100,000 souls came in. 150,000. So there's some good videos on YouTube about Evan's life. If maybe you'd want to look some of them up. He worked so hard so many nights and all night sometimes services would start at six o'clock in the morning and go until midnight 
that he absolutely wore himself out physically, mentally, and emotionally. And after a year or a year and a half, he withdrew from public life and spent the rest of his life in a position of intercession, writing some articles, making a few little appearances like at his father's funeral. But in general, he spent the rest of his life as a spiritual recluse, interceding for the nations. And I wouldn't doubt but what some of the things that we see today are a result of the prayers that he prayed back then. Hallelujah. So the song now that was the theme of this wonderful Welsh revival, oh, the voices singing it, was written by a man by the name of William Rees. And he passed away in 1883. And his only formal education was just during the winter months. He was basically a self-educated person. And he wrote many wonderful hymns and different articles. He wrote the words and it was in Welsh. And then a man by the name of Robert Lowry came along and put some music to it and translated it into English. And here is the little song. Let me see if I can get it in focus for you. It's called, Here is Love. And I just want you to think again. I want you to connect these words to that well that's on the inside of you right now. Connect the words of this song to that well that God put on the inside of you that's springing up with his love for you. Here is love vast as the ocean. Loving kindness as a flood. This flood, the water flooding you. It's never ending like an ocean. Here is love vast as the ocean, loving kindness as the flood. When the Prince of Life, our ransom, shed for us his precious blood. Who his love will not remember? Who can cease to sing his praise? He can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. Think of the well in you. On the mount of crucifixion, fountains opened deep and wide. Through the floodgates, of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide. Oh, grace and love like mighty rivers poured incessant from above and heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world with love. Did you hear all the wonderful words in there? The floodgates opened. The incessant flow, it never ceases. On the Mount of Crucifixion, fountains opened. And that fountain has flowed into you from Calvary. On the Mount of Crucifixion, where by his stripes you were healed. Fountains open deep and wide through the floodgates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious tide. Our God is gracious. His love for you is vast. At Calvary, what does it say again? A fountains opened 
it doesn't just say one fountain, it says fountains. Fountain for healing, fountain for salvation, fountain of forgiveness. All the fountains of God's mercy and grace opened. On the Mount of Crucifixion, fountains opened deep and wide. Through the floodgates of God's mercy, through the floodgates of God's mercy, swinging open, flowed a vast and gracious tide. Grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured incessant from above. And heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world with love. Oh, just get into the love of our wonderful Father. Oh, how he loves you and me. He gave his life. What more could he give? Oh, how he loves you. Oh, how he loves me. Oh, how he loves you and me. Oh, are you in a struggle with pain right now? Just relax completely. Are you fearful tonight? Maybe you got a bad doctor's report today. Just, just whatever the state of your soul or your body may be right now. Rest in the Father's love. Let him kiss you with love. Let your spirit awaken, be refilled to, to sense that incessant flow that's coming from the fountains that opened. What was that again? On the Mount of Crucifixion. God's floodgates opened and his fountains are flowing incessantly to kiss you, to restore you, to heal you, to encourage you. Oh, how he loves you and me. Just let me read the whole thing through. Here is love, vast as the ocean. God's love, put your hand on yourself, God's love for me is vast as the ocean. His loving kindness toward me as a flood. Oh, the prince of life, our rans my ransom, shed for me his precious blood. Oh, who his love will not remember who can cease to sing his praise. He can never be forgotten throughout heaven's eternal days. On the Mount of Crucifixion, fountains opened deep and wide, and through the floodgates of God's mercy flowed a vast and gracious Oh, grace and love, like mighty rivers, poured incessant from above. And heaven's peace and perfect justice kissed a guilty world with love. Hallelujah. Well, I want to just put the song in now, here at the end, so that you can enjoy it, its melody, its words. Sounds like angels singing. And at first it's in the Welsh language with the words and then next will come be sung in English with the English words. Just let it carry you away and have a refreshing. God bless you. Hallelujah. Father, I praise you, I praise you. Let these words float on the winds of your spirit.
for the hearts of these precious hearers, Lord. Bring them rest, soul and body, and refreshing in their spirit. Flood tides opening, Father, from your floodgates. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. God bless you all. I hope you've enjoyed this little bedtime story.
Tu as sauté 